In this video, we're going to be finding the kinetic energy of an object with a mass of m and a velocity of v at some time t. So if there are no changes in height, temperature, no friction, no electric or magnetic fields, then all the work we do to accelerate this object from a standstill to a velocity of v will be equal to the um, kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy is going to be equal to the work we do to accelerate this object from a standstill to a velocity of v at some time t. So since the kinetic energy only depends on the mass and velocity of this object and does not depend on how it got to that velocity, for simplicity, to simplify the problem, we could um, assume that there's a constant force accelerating this object. So the work is going to be equal to the constant force times the distance. Force is going to be equal to the mass times acceleration according to Newton's first law times the distance. So you notice that um, since the kinetic energy only depends on the mass and velocity of this object, and we somehow ended up with the acceleration and distance, we somehow need to get rid of these um, things. So, supposing we had constant velocity, I'm making a plot of that right now. Like that, there. So the distance is simply going to be equal to the velocity times time, or the area underneath the velocity line, which is this shaded rectangle. But in our case, it's a little bit more difficult. It's like this. So the velocity and time. And there we go. So our case, it starts at a velocity of zero at time zero. And at some time t, there's a velocity of v. So one thing that we could do, uh, since I said before that there is a constant force accelerating this object, there will be a constant acceleration. So that means that the velocity and time will be linear. So there will be a straight line. So let's bring it down. We um, now should split the time into smaller sub intervals like this. There. There we go. So we notice that the smaller and smaller these sub intervals of time get, the more accurate the velocity will be. So the sum of the areas of each one of these rectangles will be the distance of this um, chart um, of this plot. But we notice that this is also a triangle. So the distance will be equal to the one half base times height formula. And that will give us one half, the base is the time and the height is the velocity. So that will give us one half time times velocity. And that will give us one half T times a T. Because uh, the velocity is equal to the acceleration times the time. So that will give us one half a t squared. Bring this back into our previous expression over here with the mad statement. That will be equal to one half m a t, a t is in parentheses, squared. And that will give us one half m v squared because the acceleration times time is going to be the velocity. Now let's put some numbers into this. So supposing we have, uh, let's say a mass of two kilograms and a velocity of three meters per second. Now let's bring that in so that that means that the kinetic energy is going to be equal to the one half two times two kilograms times nine meter over second squared squared. There we go. And that will give us nine meter. I mean, sorry. It's going to be kilogram meter per second squared meter. And that will give us nine. A kilogram meter per second squared is a Newton. 
So that's going to be 9 Newton meter. And that will give us 9 joules because a Newton meter is a joule. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.